let's get started. So I've already created a folder on my desktop called WooCommerce Shop and here is where I will be adding all the files. So open your favorite code editor. For me, this is Visual Studio Code and on Windows, you can do left shift, right click and open PowerShell Windows here. Then type code with dots and this will open Visual Studio Code for you. Uh, alternatively, just open Visual Studio Code, file, open folder and select the folder that you want to work in. Let's start by creating some folders and some files. Obviously, the first file that we'll be creating is our index.html. As you can see, I've zoomed in quite a lot so you can see a little bit better if you're mobile or tablet. I hope that's okay. And let's now create the images folder and the styles. For the styles, I'm just going to name the folder CSS. And as always, I will be using SCSS for this project. So let's create a file inside the CSS folder called style.scss. The plugin that I'm using to compile the SCSS to a normal style.css file is under here, extensions, search for live SAS compiler, and once you install it, make sure you run it right here at the bottom below where it says watch SCSS. And also I will be using a live server, which will basically refresh the page for me every time I make changes on the web page. So let's toggle back the extensions, uh, watch SCSS. If we toggle back, back uh, the Explorer, you will see that this generated the style, the style.css for us, which is great. So let's close the Explorer. These are all the files that we need. If we look at the design that, we are, that we'll be doing today, um, I need to export, I've already exported this image and those two images so we can start using them. And these ones I won't bother with because these will be added from WordPress in the next video as products. So I'm not gonna bother doing this section, exporting all the images and so on, but that's it. So let's continue. Let me copy and paste the images. The namings are not super great. I've got male, female, hero image, and, and their size is quite big. Obviously they need to be optimized for the web, but it doesn't really matter at this stage here as we are just developing the website. So now that we have index.html and styles open, Let's start writing some of the uh, HTML and include our styles. One thing that I forgot to mention is that for today's video, we'll be using SCSS, but also I will plug in some media queries that I've pre-made to speed up the process and make it easier. I actually done a video on advanced media queries, and this is when I created those styles that I'm gonna show you now. So let's go ahead and copy them. What I will do is create a new file in here. And I'm gonna do this underscore breakpoint dot scss. And inside here, I'm gonna paste some of the mixings that I've pre-made for us, and I will explain them now. So basically these are just normal media queries but I've wrapped them within mixins and each mixin has a name. So this is basically a media query for phone. This media query specifically has a minimal width of 320 pixels and max width 480 pixels. So to use this media query uh, in our project will be actually very easy. All we have to do is uh, add include, then we need to type uh, the media query that we want to include. So for example, phone. So let's say insert um, device name in here. And uh, then you just need to apply the styles. I will obviously show you how this works. And let me quickly add a comment for this just so we know what it is, just like this. And this will be also available to download on my blog and github so let's close this let's go back to the html and let's start writing our html so first of all to start writing our html uh, in visual studio code is very easy we can just start typing 
uh, HTML and select HTML5. The Emmet abbreviation will save us so much time in here. And we're pretty much done with the basic structure of this site. So let's go with something like for title guard shop. Guard shop, as this is what I named my named my shop. We have the viewport which is brilliant and now we have to add our style sheets and some javascript if we are going to do any so let's add our style sheets here style sheet and to add our style sheet all we have to do is type link select link css this will give us the row of style sheet href style but obviously we have a folder called css before the style.css so we're going basically in this folder here and we're selecting the style.css now just to let you know you don't have to add the breakpoints in here we can actually import the breakpoint into the styles.css in a second as we're here let's continue by adding some of the fonts and the first font that we need to add is this one here which is going to be our body font and it's good stozo i believe and this is actually an Adobe font, it's free to use and you can go to Adobe font, find it, it will give you a link and you can just include that link in the header of our website, in the head of our website, sorry. And for the headings, we're going to be using Playfair Display and this is actually a Google font which you can go to Google font uh, and get very easily. I've already um, copied the links to save us some time here, so let's copy the let's first of all copy the first body font this is the tab kit which is adobe and let's now copy the google font which is the google fonts uh, which is the yeah the one for the headings and this is perfect so technically later on we could copy this and put all javascript in here so i could do so I can do a JavaScript. Now that we have the, all this setup, let's have a look whether our styles are working. Uh, to do this, uh, we can simply change the body, background color, let's say, to something like green and save. Let's now run the project from Explorer and uh, right click on index.html and open it with live server here at the top. This should open or the browser for us. It's taking a little bit of time and as you can see we have a background color of green which means that our styles are working and we can take this off for now and check out yeah and the changes are done automatically with the live server the next thing that we need to do before we forget is to import our breakpoint that's very easily done in styles.scss we can simply put import and then type the name of the file that we want to import and in this case we have an underlined breakpoint dot scss save this and also don't forget to close now before we start adding any of uh, or elements like the header the hero image let's add some dummy text and setup or page uh, layout quickly today i will be using BEM, which is a methodology, CSS methodology, which stands for block element modifier. If we go to, or uh, let's actually, let's add first of all, let's add one heading in here saying heading one, just for the test, we can do Alt, Shift and down to copy this. And let's add actually H2 instead now and type heading two. And let's add a paragraph in here as well, just to see how our text looks like. And in Visual Studio Code, you can start typing lorem and hit enter. And this should give you some dummy text. And of course, I need to go to view and toggle world wrap so you can see it. Save this, go back to the page. And as you can see, we have heading one, heading two and some text. Let's make sure that we have the correct font the correct styling the, and so on. The first thing I'm going to start with is create a few variables. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make a comment here just like this. So we know what they are like this. 
and in here I will be adding some variables. So one mistake that I see that uh, a lot of people make is naming their variable colors to the colors of their layout. So for example, because my layout is pretty much black and white, uh, I mean in terms of topography and other colors, it's pretty much black and white. Many people would normally do a variable like, for example, black black dash color and then they will set up rgb um, rgba zero zero and one uh, many people do this but and then they will start uh, styling their layout like let's say for example on body maybe we want to change the color the font color to be uh, to or variable black color and imagine, and I see many people doing this and reusing the, this variable all the way on all elements. Just imagine that if some of the specification for your project change and this black color needs to be changed to, let's say, gray or red. Now, we'll probably end up using this variable multiple times. And now this variable no longer makes sense because it's set to red, it says black, and it's just a mess. So. What I prefer to use is not to name anything. Instead, I usually use primary color and secondary color and so on. So my primary color is RGBA. I should have saved this 0 .0 0.0.0.1. And I can reuse this anywhere. I can change the color uh, whenever I like to the primary color and it will just change on my whole layout, which is great. So the next thing, um, which is exactly the same, some people uh, add type the, the variable names of their fonts, which is not good. For this, what I usually use is, maybe we can do heading, headings font and body font. So let's do headings font. And for headings font, we have the Playfair font, the Google one. And this is a serif font. And for the body, we have S-T-O-L-Z-L, -L, and we have sans serif. Now that we have set a few variables, we'll probably come back to this section later on and add a few more as we need. And now let's copy this and start creating some of the main styles. So let's change this to main. And some of the main styles will be things like HTML, body, H1, H2, paragraphs, uh, links, and so on. So let's start with the HTML. And as you notice, in this way, not using any reset styles. You can do that if you want. But I think the, but because I'm using the BEM methodology, uh, I'm just going to be styling everything uh, individually as components. And I really don't want to do this, where um, people do this all the time as well, um, which means everything, asterisk which means everything, select every single element on your DOM. And then people do something like padding zero, margin zero. And, I've, and also people do box sizing, border box, I get it, but this is not a good way to reset styles. Basically, those are being added to every single element of your page, and I personally don't like that, and I'm fairly confident that truly this isn't good for performance either. So don't do this. So first thing, let's style or HTML. And the reason I'm doing this is because we'll be using rems for or font size. Just to make it easier, what we can do here is set our font size to be 62.5 percent and if you're wondering what this does this is basically um, a method of setting the font size to be 62.5 percent and that's because the default font size of a browser is usually typically 16 pixels and 62.5 of 16 pixels is 10 pixels so why am I doing this? This is because I would like to make uh, my rem numbers to be, for example, 
if I was to do um, font size, I want to set my rem to be something like 1.6 rem, and this will be usually now equals to 16 pixels. So that number, it's a lot easier to work with rather than calculating the rems and so on. I hope this makes sense. Anyway, let's continue. Let's style our body. So on our body, of course, we have, as default, we have some margin. So we can reset it here, it's not a problem. Let's start by changing the body font size to 1.6 rem, which is actually the default, so we don't have to do that. But let's do it anyway, so font size 1.6. Uh, rem and then we can do and um, let's set the font family of body font body font body font is our variable that we created earlier so this is the font that we're setting for body then we need to set the uh, font weight to be around 300 and we need to set the font style do we need to send the font style to normal uh, probably not uh, we'll have a look in a second and maybe remove this. It's not a big deal. And last but not least, let's use the primary color of our layout in here. So we can do color, primary color, which is set to black. So technically speaking, if we go back to the browser, everything is looking good. Our font is coming up. But of course, we need to change the heading to be to uh, the other font that we loaded earlier. So let's do that now. So first of all, let's add a few heading elements. So one, h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, and h6. I probably won't style every single one individually, and I probably won't use them at the moment, but it's good to style uh, later on if you're developing a full-on project. One thing that I want to do on them is to reset the margin top on all of them, I, I believe. Let's have a look. Margin top, let's set it to zero for now. And the font family for the headings needs to be set to the headings font, which is the variable here. This is perfect. The next thing, the next thing I actually want to do is maybe change the line height of the body, uh, but maybe we can come back to this later if we don't like it. So let's change the line height to 1.2 uh, and we'll see how it goes. So, Technically speaking, now or H1 and H2 should be with should uh, have the new font, and as you can see, the new font is loaded and everything is looking good. Of course, I'm gonna actually change the uh, size of those fonts quickly in here. So let's do that quickly. I'm just gonna change it for H1 and H2. So H1, let's change the font size to be 3.5 rem and font weight i want it to be 600 which is semi boat and and by the way we are developing this website mobile first so first of all we're doing the mobile styles and then we're doing the uh, bigger ones such as tablet laptop desktop and so on so this will be all mobile and we'll work our way up uh, later on so let's go back We've set our font size on mobile to be 3.5 rem, font weight to be semi bold. And let's do something similar for H2. And inside here, I'm gonna do just font size to 2.8 rem. Okay, so mobile wise, this would be perfect. I want to show you how we can use the media queries mixings that I created. And let's do that now. So. If you wanted to do different size for H1 and H2 for desktop, let's say uh, we go to breakpoints and let's say we want to start from tablet portrait. So this would be the minimum width of 7, 6, 8 pixels and up, I want to change the font size to be slightly bigger. So that's kind of like desktop. I'm not gonna be doing all, all the media queries. I'm gonna keep it basic, but of course, as add as many media queries as you need. And of course, and at the bottom here, I've got a custom one, which you can pass a custom number as well, and so on. So let me show you how we can use this. Go back to, let's close this. Go back to styles, and I want to make the H1 and H2 bigger for desktop, or slightly, yeah, for desktop. 
So what I can do here is I can say include and then paste tablet mode and then in here in and then inside here I can run the H1 and change the font size font size to 6.5 rem so it's a lot bigger and let's do the same for h2 i can hold alt shift and down and i would copy it so let's change this to h2 font size will be 4.5 and save so let's see what happens when we resize the browser currently we are on desktop view it's looking real nice and when we go down to mobile it should the text went small and uh, the text resized see and this is how easy it is to do media queries with those mixins and uh, that's why i will be using them for today's video tutorial as we already here we might as well reset some of the links i i'm gonna keep them very basic uh basically let's create a link in here so href just like this uh, and we're gonna keep it empty and then link one and then let's have a look at how this link looks like and obviously it's uh, getting the default browser styles so let's change this quickly let me zoom in as well so you can see and maybe i can put this on the right side just like this so you can see a little bit better let's change the link um, color super quickly styles and to do this i'm just gonna be doing them in here links like this and we can do a link let's change the color to be uh, equals the main color which is dollar sign primary color that's now let's change the text decoration to be actually i'm gonna leave the text decoration to be uh, underlined uh, because that's uh, because of usability so let's leave it as it is and let's just do uh, we could have done a hover effect as well maybe we can do hover and just change uh, we could have done a different we could have done a mixing or we could have done we could have done a hover button but let's keep it simple and just put maybe like color and then rgb um, to be rgba to be around 0 0.8 which is makes it slightly opaque when we hover over I don't think you can see this but um, yeah that's probably too bad okay but yeah you can see this a little bit now uh, this is just an example anyway the next two things that we need to do is visit it obviously I haven't clicked on this but if I do the color might change as you can see the color is now changed ever so slightly it's kind of hard to see but uh, what we have to do is for a visit it we're gonna have to do color uh, set to primary color and for the active as well I'm gonna do exactly the same uh, we can actually we could have done the same on one line I believe uh, let's have a look just like this and I think that works as well so the active and visited buttons should be all the same color uh, which is the primary color of our layout so we'll probably have to style a few more elements such as input and so on but we'll do that as we go along um, as we add the style uh, as we add the elements to our index uh, html page so first of all let's start by creating our navigation at the top um, so first of all let's start by creating our navigation at the top and just bear in mind that we are designing mobile first so we're gonna have to look at this design because we have our burger menu on the left side logo in the middle and our tools on the right side while on the desktop it's swapped the, the logo is on the left side the menu is in the middle and then we have the tools so just bear this in mind and we're gonna be using grid to make this very easy to swap around to swap around the elements so first of all let's create the header into our index.html file let's remove those default styles that we were styling and start clean in here i'm going to use the html5 element header but i will also like to give it a class name so we'll be because we're writing bem this will give us the flexibility to change this 
to anything we wish later on if we if we have to and you will see what I mean as I go along so first of all let's give this uh, a class name and usually you'd probably want uh, to be kind of specific so let's do top or main header uh, yeah let's do main header you would think that uh, I already came up with the names but nope not today um, so then we have the main header uh, inside here so this is our block element then we can have uh, three elements which will be our burger logo tools so let's create them let's start with the logo the actual order of the elements doesn't matter so much uh, in this stage but I will start with the logo uh, so let's create a div with a class name of main dash header and we're gonna do two underscores for logo okay and inside here is where I'm gonna create a link with href and just add my logo in here normally you'd have it as as, as SVG or PNG or JPEG or whatever but I'm using the same font for my logo so I'm just gonna type it out like this and as you can see it in here maybe I should zoom in a little bit so you can see better now that we have the logo the next thing that we need to do is do the navigation and for the navigation we can use the nav HTML5 element with the class name of uh, main header and then we can do two underscores nav okay and inside in here inside here is where we're gonna have our burger menu and where we're gonna have the lists so we need to create this um, this in here this here recreate it and also we need to add these links as well and obviously they're gonna be hidden on uh, mobile and this is gonna be hidden on desktop so let's do that First of all, let's do the the burger menu. I'm actually going to call this burger menu menu link, maybe. I don't know. I'm not great with uh, naming stuff. So let's do the class name of menu dash link. And inside here, we can have two or three spans. Span like this. And actually, let's just go for two. I quite like the minimalist. Uh, uh, burger menus where you only have two lines instead of three but I'll show you how to make it anyway we have two spans and we could potentially give them specific classes but uh, I think that's very unnecessarily at this point let's now create a menu and because this layout we're pretty much prepping this for WordPress I know how my menu is going to come out it's going to come out in a unordered list and we can change the class names and all that but uh, let's keep it simple for now so let's do let's mimic it the way you will come out from WordPress as much as we can so we don't have to restart stuff later on so let's do a URL with the class name of menu and then maybe we need to be a little bit more specific but that's fine uh, let's go with the list and inside the list every single list is going to have a class name of menu item which will be very helpful later on and obviously inside each list we're going to have a link which will lead us to a page just like this and the first one we have is products and let's copy this three more times i can do this by shift sorry alt shift and down one two three and let's quickly change this to sale uh, about support and we're done the navigation is done as well here and the last thing that we need to do is to create the tools which is this magnifying glass and the shopping cart uh, for that let's create a new div in here div with the class name of main header underscore underscore uh, tools and then inside here we're gonna have two links so href let's keep them like this and also let's give this href a class name of 
tools dash icons maybe I'm not sure if this is necessarily again uh, but let's do it anyway then we can duplicate this and inside here is where we'll be adding or icons for for this design I use the feather icons which you can find under feather feather icons dot com and instead of using the CDN I'm just going to download the SVGs that I need and just copy and paste them into my layout instead because I wasn't very happy with the JavaScript way of inserting the icons uh, but let's go with it so search is one that I need let's download I think I might already download these uh, cards is the second one that I need let's download it um, and yes I've already downloaded these so let's open those two icons let's delete those uh, let's open those two SVGs in Visual Studio Code like this and this is the shopping cart let's copy the SVG paste the shopping cart into the second one here and let's copy the search and paste the search into the first one just like this so let's go back to a layout let's start styling the header and then we'll come back and develop the rest of the elements of the page um, so first of all we we need to remember that uh, we have a main header class name and then logo nav and so on so let's start by copying some of them so in the styles inside here i'm gonna paste main header and i'm also gonna copy this comment in here so we are a bit more organized header okay so this is a class so we're gonna have to add the dot and then inside here um, what i want to achieve now is display this as grid and position the elements just like it's on the design to do this we can use grid sorry we can use display grid just like this and also you have to be careful when you do this but if you are developing um, microsoft sorry edge and internet explorer is a little bit funny when you uh, do this you have to actually do display uh, dash ms grid which is really annoying we ha you have to display the prefixes and there is an online tool for this that can help you out um, grid prefixes git github so this website is called auto prefixer you basically copy your styles paste them in here and this will give you an example that should work for like edge and so on but it's really annoying that we have to do this just bear in mind that you have to do this as well and spend a lot of time building it uh, today i'm just going to be doing the normal ones which work on all but on pretty much all modern browsers i'm just going to be doing this today uh, but yeah just let you know so first of all let's zoom out a little bit now so we wanted to look similar to the design that we have we have display grid but nothing is happening uh, on firefox you can actually go underneath here when you inspect the elements and display uh, line numbers display areas and so on and the reason that no area is displayed is because we need to find the grid area so header and click and click on the grid here this will display the grid for you which can be very handy sometimes and also you can display the numbers if you wish but i don't want them at the moment and you can display the names of the grid and so on so first of all we need to do a couple of things we need to set a grid template which will allow us to position or elements the way we want and to do this let's go with a grid template and to do a template you can do it on a little line in here uh, with a single quote and you can start by naming every single uh, by naming those three uh, elements so we have uh, first of all we're gonna have on mobile we're gonna have navigation then we're gonna have the logo and then we're gonna have the tools save and as you can see uh, grid kind of already names them by uh, by the order that they are in or HTML but this is wrong we need to actually give them the proper names so I'll need to give 
the logo and logo name and so on. To do this, what we can do is let's uh, be, let's uh, get the logo the logo class name, which is main header logo. And what you can do in SCSS instead of doing this and then doing the styles here, what we can actually do is inside here we can do an ampersand and then we can do underscore underscore logo and that should act exactly the same as this. So we can type all styles in here. So first of all, let's name our logo um, to be set to grid area to be called logo. Grid area logo, let's save. And as you see, the logo is now turning into the logo and it's actually taking the second position, which is here. Now let's do the same for the other ones. And we have nav and we have tools. So let's do exactly the same, copy this. nav and let's paste it one more time and let's say tools and of course we need to change the grid area to be nav and tools okay what this allows us to do is easily manipulate the position of the elements on the page so for example i could copy uh, i could move the nav to be in the middle here save it and look at what happens the nav goes in the middle. And this is what we'll be using to do the media query for desktop. So from mobile to desktop. Uh, let's go back because we want the mobile to be nav logo tools. And of course, we're going to have to hide this and so on. But uh, let's start. Uh, let's finish this up first of all. I want to add a little bit of uh, gap between them. And to do this, grid makes it very easy. You have to do gap and then you can do something like 10 pixels. As you can see, it creates this gap for us. Then what I want to do is I want to ensure that all those three blocks are equally spaced. And to do this with grid, we can use the grid template dash columns. And we can either set every single element to be one fraction of the screen like this, one FR, one FR. Or we can use, as you see, they are now equal. Or we can use the short, the short hand, which is repeat. And the short hand is repeat three one fr, just like this. I want to add a little bit of padding as well. So let's add a bit of padding, like I don't know, 18 pixels. That looks better. Last thing that I want to make sure I do is don't forget that on mobile we have white background, but on desktop we don't. So what I'm going to have to do is create this with um, RGBA. Let's do that. Um, in here, I can do background dash color RGBA. And then I can do hmm, doing all these stuff. So I can do uh, no, 255, 255, 255 is white and then set it to one, which means that the background color of uh, the main header will be white. And to prove that this is working, let's change the body color uh, super quickly. We'll have to remove this in a bit to, I don't know, this one looks good. As you can see, white and the menu is white and we have a baby blue or something like that. We'll leave this um, in for now, but later on we'll have to remove it. Uh, let's go down and let's not forget that this menu is actually going to be positioned on top of our hero image. So we're going to have to make this absolute. And to do this, we can basically pretty much do position absolute and then we can set the top to be zero the left to be zero so the div starts from top zero left zero and we need right as well zero okay so you won't see a difference just yet but when we add elements they will be underneath here oh um, which reminds me that we'll probably have to do um, a z index one at some point so we might as well do it now so it's this menu is above uh, everything else now that we are here let's start with the first uh, element on here which is the logo so for the logo i'm just gonna make it actually i want to reset all the links 
on the header. Yeah, let's do that. Let's reset all the links on the header actually. So text decoration, I want to set to none. Yeah, okay. And now let's start the, let's style the logo. For the logo, what I'm gonna do is just bump up the size a little bit to font size 2.4 rem. Uh, then let's bump up the font weight to 600, which is same boat. That's looking much better now. And I want to be able to, uh, if we make the Visual Studio smaller, just a little bit, I want to be able to justify this in the middle of the screen uh, and in the middle horizontally and vertically. So to do this, I can do justify self, which is going to be obviously center, and I can do align um, self center as well. Okay, this is working quite well. Um, the next thing that I want to do is the navigation. Obviously, this is going to need to be, we need to hide this actually and create our little burger menu first. So let's have a look at what the uh, name was. So this, we need to add hide menu link. We could be very specific and do it in here, just like this menu link. And I would just do display none. Um, that doesn't seem to be working. Let's have a look. Oh, sorry. I need to be hiding this one instead. Uh, so menu display none. And now we need to create the actual menu. We also need to position uh, them in a second as well, but let's finish with the navigation. So first of all, to create those um, three elements or two, two in my, oh, I'm gonna just do two because it's easier to recreate them. Uh, if you remember, we created two spans in here. So I'm going to use them to put background color in them and display them as the lines instead of putting SVG. So this will be super easy to do actually. So let's copy the menu link class and let's do it in here. Um, first of all, let's set the width of this container to be roughly, let's set it to 2.4 rem. Let's set the height to be 1.4 rem. Then let's set the position to be relative because we're going to position the spans absolute inside. And now let's target the spans as well. Span. And let's have a look if we added classes to them. No, we didn't add classes, but that's fine. Let's uh, target the span. So obviously the spans now need to be positioned absolute. And I need to make sure that they start from the left side zero and to the right side zero. Then let's display the spans as blocks. Let's make sure that they have a little bit of height so we can see the background color in a second. So 0 0.2 rem should be good enough. And let's put the background dash color to be RGB. Is this black? Yeah, RGB black, or you can use whatever. So obviously we have two spans in our HTML, but we see one. This is because they're both positioned at the top at the moment. Uh, let's position one at the top, and let's position the other one at the bottom of the screen. So let's select the first child first of all, and first child. Let's position it at the top zero. And let's select the second one, the last child, sorry, last child. Uh, let's position the, and let's position this one at the bottom, just like this. And as you can see, the menu is now looking good, but this needs to be positioned um, as well. So, so to do that, I'm actually gonna have to position the nav here. Let's do justify self to be start, which will start from the left side. And let's do align self to be center. So this should center our menu right here. That's all good so far. Let's now focus on the tools uh, here on the right side. Uh, let's just move them to the right side. To do this, we can do justify self and 
and we can do a line um, self center. The only thing I would do is probably add some padding between them. Maybe we can target the actual tool icons class to do that. So we can do it in here just like this tool icons and maybe we can do padding of 0.66 rem. This will make them slightly, that didn't seem to work, class name. Maybe we should uh, do it uh, singular tools icon like this and change it in here as well. It's like this. Okay, this is better. As you saw, the icons moved, but uh, the only issue here is that they both uh, created a little bit of padding around them, so it's not going to be aligned exactly as the space in here, but they are going to be easier to hit. So let's leave them the way they are. Of course, we can do the but we can do the pseudo element not last child and avoid this if we wanted to but let's leave it for now so far our menu is looking very good and now we need to figure out how to do this for desktop so um, i'm gonna have to open this for desktop like this unfortunately and just toggle between visual studio code and the browser for desktop we're gonna have to move the logo to the left we're gonna have to hide this icon, uh, display the actual menu that we hidden before in the middle. Let's do that. First of all, we can use your, we can use or handy media queries. Uh, just if this is the header, we can do it just in here. So let's do only one. Well, the only one for now. Uh, but of course, feel free to use more multiple queries if you need to for your design and so on. So let's do include tablet dash portrait and inside here what we can do the first thing is to change the grid template so the logo is in the first position let's copy this paste it and let's swap the logo with nav like this let's remove the space as well and save so technically speaking if you go back to the browser you will see that the logo is now on the left and we have the nav in the middle let's fix the rest of the stuff so we need to remove the background color now and this will be easy because we used rgba so let's do background dash color rgba and then we can do 255 255 255 and then zero which is opacity zero so that should remove the background for us as you can see the white background is gone and then let's focus on the logo so let's do and and logo sorry underscore underscore logo and we need to justify self the logo to be at the start just like this and let's do the same for the navigation we need to do ampersand underscore underscore nav and then we can do justify self to be center now everything is looking good but we need to display this none so uh, which one was the element so we need to display this as a block and this one as none so let's copy those two and inside here we can actually add them like this and we can display this one as a block and we can display this one as none like this and let's see what happens as you can see we have the links which is awesome but of course we can actually have to do a little bit of work on those links to make them look good so let's do that now if we go back to the html and uh, inspect the links we can see that we have class of menu and inside here we have menu items item sorry so let's copy this find where the menu is in here and i know it's displayed none here but we can actually add some more styles in here just to reset them like this okay so we can add uh, urls as default have padding so let's remove the padding 
to zero. Let's remove the bullet points. So list style is set to none. And then we need to add the menu item, which is a class name, and display those menu items as uh, inline block, I think. Inline block, and let's just add some padding between them. And of course, we could have done this in so many ways. We could have spaced them out equally with grid and flexbox. But uh, I think this is a very easy and nice solution. So let's go with it. Um, as you can see, everything is looking great so far. Um, the only difference uh, is that the font on the menu is slightly bolder in here. So we could change this if you wish. Um, so maybe where we added the links, we could say uh, font weight to be, I don't know if it's 400, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, that's much better actually. 400 and we are good. We could have added the underscores on any of them if uh, we wanted to, but uh, let's continue to save for some time. Now that we have the desktop menu, let's have a look how the mobile menu is looking when we shrink down the website. And at some point in here, as you can see, it's switching to mobile and then desktop, which is brilliant. Okay, the next section that we need to focus on is the hero section. So let's start by adding some of them, uh, some of those elements into our index.html page, and we'll go from there. So first of all, let's open index.html, and just below the header, let's start by creating a new section. And I'm going to give this section a class name of hero. And again, you can be a bit more specific if you wish to. And um, inside hero, I'm actually the hero section is actually going to be a big link, so the whole section will be clickable. And to do this, let's do an href with hashtag inside it so it's not broken, and we can add a class name of hero underscore underscore wrapper. This link will be your hero underscore wrapper. And if you were to change, the, the good thing about BEM is that if you were to change this element to no longer be link, uh, then this, the styles will still work on whatever we use, even if you put div or whatever. Well, that's the idea anyway. Um, the next thing I want to do inside here is create a div with the class name of wrapper. And inside here, we're gonna have probably a div with the class name of, I don't know whether to do it. Let's do it as a hero heading. Yeah, let's do it as a hero heading. And then inside here, I'm gonna add a span like this. Actually, instead, let's do wrapper, and this will be all wrapper heading. And inside here, we're gonna have a span, which I don't know what to name yet but then we're going to have an h1 which will be uh, I'm, I'm going to copy the text uh, in a second and then we're going to have like a fake button which will be kind of like a div with a class name of a button and then and yeah i uh, just will put it as a button but i can show you how to use a modifier as well if you wish to so let's copy the text super quickly so we have new collection in here then we have elegant and luxury in here and then for the button we have browse collection so let's copy and paste all this and let's go with it so so i'll probably leave these and just tie them up to uh, this div it, they're already kind of uh, specific enough i think uh, otherwise it could get a little bit messy but so let's save this and see what we get. Um, we have all the elements, it's perfect. Let's start styling this section now. Okay. The first thing I want to do is add some sort of layout element uh, section in here. So let's add one in here, just like elements. Uh, I don't know if this is the right naming, but what I want to achieve here is on every single section of my website, I want to add, I want to make sure that the section is in the middle. So let's do that quickly. 
margin zero auto and this will be very handy in a second and I also want to add some padding everywhere so the text isn't exactly close to uh, the edge and to do this I'm actually going to create a variable in here I'll move it at the top in a second so maybe we can do a mobile one first mobile padding and then we can set the mobile padding to be 16 pixels excuse me it needs to be 2.16 pixels and then maybe we can do a desktop one to be set to 36 pixels so there is more space I think we've got an error so yeah I need to add the variable mobile padding padding here like this and let me move those variables at the top with the other ones like this so let's have a look at what's happening so if I refresh we're getting the 16 pixels of padding at the moment let's uh, go back and focus on the hero now as well um, again so we can copy we can copy this and paste it inside here and just do hero I think I spaced out things too much but let's go so first of all our hero section is called hero so we can use the same class name just like this and the first thing that I want to make sure is that the position of the hero is relative and the reason for this is because I want to add the background I want to add this background to be as a pseudo element so we can modify the opacity of it and so on on mobile and yeah and you will see how it goes so first of all let's make sure that this is set to position relative instead of adding the background image here we're gonna do it in a pseudo element which will be and and sorry and after like this and then we're gonna have to do content make this empty and then we can add our background image I will show you why this will be very useful in a minute background image and then we can do URL slash images and I need the hero image at 2x JPEG we need to set obviously because this is kind of a this is a pseudo element and the hero is set to relative need to set this to absolute so let's do uh, position absolute and then obviously we have to do top zero right zero bottom zero and left zero make sure that the z index is set to minus one so it's behind the hero element and let's have a look at what we get so as you can see the image is now in here which is ideal and we can use the hero wrapper to actually make this content a lot bigger so let's do that to do this we can do our trick which was ampersand underscore underscore wrapper and inside here we can do inside here we can do the height to be set to 32 vh which is which is the vertical height then we can display this as a grid which will help us to position our element a little bit easier and we can align the align the content to the end let's have a look at what we get okay this is looking good so far because this is a link we might need to remove the text decoration and we can also make this very specific if you wanted to but let's leave it as it is let's just add text decoration text decoration to be none let's see if it works okay this is fine now you're probably wondering well how do we position this in the middle like kind of in the middle here of the screen so the so her face is on the right side and our elements are here on the left side and to this uh, to do this what we can do is this wrapper element i'm going to use to create a little section that is kind of always center lined and maybe we can re reuse this later on as well so let's use it uh, so let's do it in uh, under here uh, layout elements what i'm going to do is create the wrapper i'm going to make sure that the wrapper is set to margin zero auto which will set it in the middle of the screen but of course at the moment um, 
He's probably taking the full screen. Let's set it to full width, 100%, just in case. And let's set the max width to be 1280 pixels. And this should constrain the box to be that size and throw it in the middle. If we refresh, you will see that we get the, excuse me, we get the title kind of in the middle just like the design and obviously this can be positioned uh, more uh, this could be positioned precisely if you keep playing with the numbers and depending of the resolution of uh, the breakpoints okay let's shrink down the website to mobile so uh, we can see what's going on and everything is looking good so far of course the image is not very visible at the moment and because and this is because uh, we need to set the background uh, image, no, the background size, excuse me, to kind of cover everything like this. And also we need to make sure that this image never repeats. So background uh, repeat, we can set to no repeat. And last but not least, we can actually position this image a little bit better so we can see her face and to do this we can do background background position zero pixels and then 16 percent okay we have to play with the position a little bit more maybe like uh, 26 or 40 60 Okay, basically we have to uh, play a little bit with the position to make it look good, but uh, that's the idea. And because it's uh, because we've done it with after, this allows us to do all sorts of stuff. For example, if we wish to, we could change the opacity now to the picture. While if we put it on the background here on the hero section, we probably wouldn't be able to change the opacity of the actual image itself. We'll have to do the full section. So that was the idea anyway. Let me show you. So if I was to change the opacity here, 0.5, that would work absolutely fine. Uh, just in case the image is taking too much of the text and so on. But I think it's looking just okay at the moment. So let's continue with uh, working on the rest of the stuff. For the heading, we're gonna have to center line everything. So if we go back, we have wrapper heading. So let's copy this and do it in here. And we can do text align center. Oh, I've put uh, too many things. Uh, this setting actually needs to go outside. Uh, we can possibly put it in here, maybe. Uh, let's just do it. Uh, it needs to be wrapper and then wrapper heading. So technically speaking, we need to. We could either wrap it in the wrapper that we created um, on top, or we can just use this class name for now, which is a little bit annoying. Um, Actually, you know what, let's let's do it. Let's copy this and put it in here, which could be could end up being a little bit annoying, but we'll see. So we have the heading here now, and the heading is center aligned. Then we need to make sure that uh, we have max width of 600 pixels in here as well. So max width, 600 pixels and you will see why. And now we need to um, style the span and the button. So for the span, it will be fairly easy. Span, we can do display block. Then we can do letter spacing 0 0.2 rem. And then we can do a little bit of margin so they're not so close together. So margin bottom 10 pixels, just like this. And it's looking so much better already. Um, obviously, the next bit that we need to do is we need to kind of like uh, style the button that we created. And I'm going to do this under the layout elements as well. Uh, just 
just around here so so button the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the button is set to inline block the color is set to primary color then I need to add some padding of 10 pixels uh, 16 pixels so 10 pixels top and bottom 16 bit pixels left and right make sure that the text inside the button is center aligned make sure that any text decoration on the button is set to none uh, make sure that the font size is set to 1.2 rem so as you can see this has taken a little bit of um, this has taken effect but um, I forgot to add border so let's do that uh, we need we need to add the border which is two pixels solid and I'll just use the primary color again All right, this is looking good obviously we can add background and so on and this is where you can do modifiers uh, for example you could do dash uh, sorry you could do class name of a button with a mo modifier of I don't know let's say white let's say for example white and I could potentially do here a background color of one two three which is white and now I can add this modifier to my button uh, which is here like this button white and if I save it you will see that we now have a white button I actually need the button white which I didn't realize so let's actually leave it there obviously you can do button small button big and all those things but I'm not gonna be doing that now so uh, the only thing that I want to ensure is that when we go on desktop I want the button to be ever so slightly bigger I mean the font so what I will do is I'm gonna add the media query in here with include tablet portrait and for tablet portrait font size is going to be 1.6 rem and if we do this you will see that the font size has gone up on the button and everything else okay so now we need to actually modify this section to work well on desktop let's have a look at how it looks uh, it's not so bad actually we can now make this a little bit uh, bigger position it better and this button looks ridiculously uh, low so we might have to change this as well and this is probably because we have so much margin on this uh, front here and I can change it from the wrapper let's have a look so I can change it in here maybe just do uh, h1 margin zero and have a look okay this is not very nice um, I need to figure out a number maybe like 20 pixels um, okay, this is almost there maybe like 26 pixels all right this works for me it's fine let's continue for now and and let's now do the desktop version so for the desktop I'm in the hero section here let's add another media query right here and include tablet portrait and inside here I'm going to select the hero wrapper just like this because we're gonna have to change the size and maybe we might have to make the uh, background size no no that's fine all we, need, all we need to do here is do the wrapper so for the wrapper let's do a height of 80 virtual height and make sure that we have align content set to center let's have a look okay this is actually looking really nice um, we do have a little bit of space here so we could uh, this is actually centered in uh, dead middle so even if I was to um, even if I was to change this to 88 let's say this will be still dead in the middle and this doesn't seem to be exactly like the original design but 
So let's have a look. Yeah, the, the font is a little bit bolder, but these are things that we can work on later on. I don't want to waste your time uh, doing bold um, changing fonts and so on. Now I consider the hero section done. Obviously we can add more multiple media queries, but if we scale down, hopefully it should kick off, kick in and work like this, which is brilliant. This is fine so far. The next section that we need to concentrate on is this section. And trust me, the, the rest of the stuff shouldn't take too long. All right, let's focus on the second section, which is the promo cards and this is how they look on mobile and let's get going and create them so hopefully these will be a little bit easier to do let's go to html first of all and let's create the promo card underneath this section here so let's create a new section and this section will have the class of standard promo just like this and inside this section, we're obviously going to have two uh, promo cards. So what we can do is let's create one with the class of promo card. And then we can use promo. Um, then we can add a modifier like promo dash card dash dash gray. And maybe uh, the first one will be the one where the this lady is displayed so and the second one will be the this guy so let's maybe add another modifier like promo dash card dash dash woman and then inside here we're gonna have um, a title and some body text so what we can do is grab this in an h2 and give the h2 a class name of promo card and then underscore underscore heading and inside here of course we're gonna have to copy the text so many layers copy the text and then we need to do the paragraph underneath and i will give this class of promo dash card underscore underscore body just we're so a little bit more specific and let's copy some of this text as well copy paste and let's have a look quickly just like this and we can now copy this section below and obviously change this to you'll be uh, men maybe and we can change this to shop men and i believe the difference is literally just men's new arrivals okay let's have a look at our page and yeah everything is working so far we have everything that we need um and let me show you how this is going to work now so let's create a new section uh, we've created them these comments take some uh, so much space let's create a new one in here uh, let's just say this is I don't know, actually let's copy this let's say this is our promo card so first of all we're gonna have to start with the promo uh, standard promo um, class element make sure this is displayed as grid and now that we have a display this grid so technically speaking uh, we should be okay the way it looks now just like this we actually need to focus on the individual box now and to do this we can do uh, let's say promo card we can do like block like this and damn it if you remember we gave or promo cards a promo card class name so let's copy this and use it in here so what i want to do is add a little bit of padding everywhere on those cards and if you remember we created this variable which is mobile padding so let's add that padding we can use it mobile padding let's save it and as you can see it makes a little bit more padding 
uh, breathing space for design. Also, let's make sure that we have some margin at the bottom uh, of each card, which will be like 20 pixels will do for now. And this is our block. Now we need to tile our elements and actually we need to style them in here. So let me show you. I don't know why I'm doing this now, the block element thing, but just, just to see how it works anyway. Uh, we'll remove them later. So obviously we created this as a heading and we created this as a body. So we can use our trick, which is underscore underscore heading. I'm actually not gonna be touching the heading, so let's remove that. Let's remove that and create uh, just the body. And for the body, all I want to do is set max width to be set to 70%. And this is so the text doesn't go right at um, right to the end of the screen because I want to put the images in here so they're visible nicely. And remember we done a gray modifier. This is because I want those cars to have a gray background color just like this one. And first of all, let me remove the background color of our main page, which we don't need. I guess. Okay. All gray modifier will be added in here. So this will be like a modifiers maybe. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Okay, modifiers and we can do ampersand um, dash dash gray. For this, let's do it on one line background color and the background color will be set to F2, F3, F5. Like this and this should be like a, this should be a gray color. And as you can see, this makes the cards very easily modify, uh, med modifiable. I can do different colors and so on. Now let's create the image in here and then we'll create the the one for the men as well. To do this, these are modifiers as well and we can add them straight in here. So dash dash woman and we're gonna have to do a background image. And the background image will be set to URL dash uh, images. Uh, I don't know if I need the slash, but we'll see in a second. So slash images female.png is the one that I have. Uh, let's say this. Okay, it's not popping up. Let's remove this. Hmm. This isn't popping up. Um, Oh, and this is because I've misspelled promo card with gra guard. So card, card, excuse me for this. And now we can remove that. Where are they? Uh, the female image should be uh, appearing, but I think it's probably far too big. And that's why it's not appearing now. So what we have to do is do background size to contain maybe. Okay, this is perfect. Then we can do background repeat, no repeat. And obviously we need to position this image to the right here. The two ways of doing this, we can either do background dash position to the right. And that works real nice actually. Uh, it fits perfectly. But if you wanna do it just like I've done it here on the mobile design, Actually, this card is a lot bigger, but it doesn't matter. Uh, smaller ones are looking cool as well. Uh, if you wanted to do it just like this, you will have to position this image um, to the right a little bit more. Um, this is a little bit awkward to do. So what we can do, and I don't know whether this is a good way of doing it, but it seems to work. What we can do is make sure that the background position is set to, is set to 100%. So let's do calc. Uh, set to 100% and we can do minus 90 but for some reason I think only 90 uh, minus 90 like this will work. Let's have a look. Okay, as you can see this is now uh, quite fluid if I was to resize it. Uh, the woman is standing there, uh, her face is like right in the middle which is awesome and uh, it's just not moving and it's it's brilliant basically. So maybe we can just do a less than obviously and so on. Um, so this is a good way of doing it, I would guess. And 
yeah or just put position right so let's leave it as it is now I quite like the way it is anyway uh, and we need to copy this code and do exactly the same for the uh, what do they call it for the men men and we need to do uh, male and that's perfect and of course we can now position this allows us having two different classes allows us to position the image uh, the way we want so I'll probably position it like almost there yeah I'll probably position it just like this and I think this is awesome it's working quite well um, one thing that I noticed is that we didn't convert these to actual clickable elements and this is why having specific styles become very handy because now I can go back and instead of a div I can literally change this to a link obviously I need to give it href and some link and change this to a and if I save it as you can see it's working exactly the same but obviously we just need to reset the uh, link underline and this is awesome so let's do the same for the other one this is a good example of using uh, the BEM stuff save it and let's just remove the text decoration we can have on hover I guess but I don't want it the way it is at the moment so we could do here text decoration none and that would be gone and if we need to um, add the hover effect uh, we actually already have the hover effect but if you need to add underline we can always do ampersand hover text decoration underline just to show you and that would underline it which is awesome let's uh, continue now we need to do this for desktop of course if we go up uh, on desktop these are full width which don't look too bad actually but we need to make them look uh, like this design here to do this we are gonna add a quick media query to the promo card let's have a look because um, we displayed those cards as a grid that's very helpful now we can literally let's say let's include another uh, media query now let's include the large one so include a large and inside here what I want to do is because we have grid we can set uh, the grid to be into template columns and uh, to take one each column to take one fraction each grid template columns one fr one fr save and let's have a look and as you can see they are now next to each other let's go back we need um, if you want to set the height um, I think the height for this is 450 um, we can actually use the grid uh, auto row so this will make all rows automatically 450 pixels so I can do grid auto rows 450 pixels and last but not least let's make a little gap between them of like 40 pixels let's have a look now so we have the gap between them which is awesome they are all 450 pixels in height and maybe we just need to kind of mess with the styles in here maybe position them uh, in the middle and so on so in the design we actually have them like center line which is a little bit annoying but let's do it so let's copy this and inside here inside the large uh, media query let's do promo card and we need to display the promo card as grid first of all so display grid so we can center align the content inside it and let's have a look at what's happened as you can see the content is now aligned then we need to mess with the headings a little bit so ampersand underscore underscore heading and percent underscore underscore uh, body let's change that maybe uh, we can do it of max width 300 pixels and let's make sure that the text align is set to center just like the design 
Uh, as you saw, there was a lot of margin on the heading, so I want to reset that. We can do again and heading, and then we can do margin zero. And last but not least, maybe, let's have a look. Yeah, last but not least, we can change the line height between those fonts is too close for some reason. So let's change that as well. We can do another one here and body and the body will be set to line height free rem. Okay, let's have a look. That's looking much better. Everything is looking so cool. Um, the other thing that we can do is to make sure that the images are fit uh, are fitting nicely in here. We could at the moment they're set to contain. Uh, we could set them to be cover. Uh, let's have a look at how that works. So inside here, I would probably do woman. Sorry, woman, and then I will just say. In this position, we have the image already there. So I would say cover, and I would probably do position it to the right. Let's see what this does. And as you can see, we are now seeing full um, the full image of the woman, just like on the design here. And let's do the same for the uh, female. So let's do that. Uh, men section and yeah that's it actually Ooh. because these are uh, because these are actually repeating what we can do is copy these and hopefully uh, put oh, excuse me we could potentially copy this put a comma in here and leave in here and that would save us a little bit of space and they're still working, which is great. There is a little bit of gap in here that we can sort out, but honestly, not a big deal at the moment. We can just add a little bit of margin from the header or whatever. Um, let's have a look. So on the hero section, let's just add some uh, margin maybe. Um, where is the hero? We can do it in here margin bottom and let's have a look okay that's looking perfect uh, so if we go down obviously because we've done a large one a large media query look at when they kick in it's quite late i would say so maybe we need to do the tablet one but just to show you it's working real well so far superb let's continue the next section of the design is this uh, i'm going to call them uh, shop sections so first of all, let's go to our index and create a new section in here. So we're going to have section with the class name of shop section. Uh, and then let's close the section. And then inside here, we can have an H2, which will be our heading. So let's give it class name of shop dash section underscore underscore heading and um, this heading will be woman's bestsellers then let's add this paragraph at the bottom and let's add the paragraph a class name of shop section underscore underscore body and then we're gonna have probably another div with the class name of items for now that honestly don't do this that doesn't matter and this is where we're gonna be adding the items when we do the actual shop with WooCommerce so I'll leave this blank for now uh, we have this section we can literally copy this section and duplicate um, duplicate the next one and so on. So let's see how this would work, just like here. The next one was called New Arrivals. And then the text I'm going to copy from here. 
and just like this and like paste in here and maybe we can do break points just like this so they look ever so slightly better and the break point on this one is at soft so let's find soft and put a break point here save it and let's see how it looks okay everything is looking great let's uh, make sure we style them super quickly hopefully this section will be super easy to do let's go let's jump to styles.scss copy this as we have already started doing that shop section okay the shop section obviously we have a class of shop section we have the uh, ampersand underscore underscore heading and we have the ampersand underscore underscore body and inside here all i want to do is text align them to the center boom job done uh, i don't know why the the space uh excuse me the line height is so bad maybe i just need to do it globally let's see yeah let's do it globally for now see how it goes uh, let's change it to the body just like this obviously okay now that that's i think that's much better actually uh, obviously it's messing up with my button a little bit for some reason but that's okay we can change that later now that we have those two sections we're gonna have the items obviously come in from wordpress which is fine we don't have to deal with this anymore we are done with this section and let's focus on the next one which is our newsletter hopefully this one be easy to do as well get going so first of all let's go to the bottom and i'll copy this probably should have done like like this so they're not big headings and then i'll do newsletter here so newsletter let's go to html underneath here we're gonna have a section and this section will have a class of newsletter and inside here we can have an h1 which will have this text here let's copy it up, paste it and of course let's give this uh, class name of newsletter heading and then we need to create a form to create a form you can go to mailchimp sign up for account and copy the mailchimp form i've already created one so i'm just going to copy and paste it i'm gonna leave most of the stuff will be the only thing that i've done is i've created uh, the form has a class of form and the input has a class of form email and do i have anything else and then i have the submit button as well which has a class a modifier of button i guess we can call it this way oh and this has two classes of buttons so let's remove one just like this okay uh, let's go back to the page see what we get uh, this is looking fantastic <laughs> now let's start this super quickly and go to styles.css and let's get started so our newsletter shouldn't be too bad i would assume uh, the first thing that we need to do is start by typing newsletter and let's display the newsletter as a grid as well it makes things a lot easier then i want to align the items uh, to the center center just like this and i don't think that done anything but let's put a center like this and let's put a gap as well of 20 pixels i think that worked the gap worked now let's uh, reset the heading which will be ampersand and this one's go heading and inside here we can do font size to 3 rem oh yeah this is looking much better and then we can reset the margin on the heading zero like this and now for the desktop version let's get 
uh, let's add a media query now here. So includes tablet portrait, I'm gonna go for, and I'm gonna do grid template columns, and I'm gonna do two fractions this time, and then one fraction. So I want this to be uh, bigger, uh, to take two fractions of the screen, and this to take one fraction of the screen. But of course, this will only happen when we go on the tablet. So when we resize this, uh, we should see it like this. So as you can see, this is taking more space than the other. And then it goes back to normal grid. The only thing I would probably do for the heading as well is probably set the font uh, style to be italic. Yeah, that looks much better. And let's style the form super quickly. The form I will style separately inside here. And what I will do is for the email, I'm going to do and and email. And this will take 100%. This is basically the email box in here. This will take 100%. The margin bottom, let's do 20 pixels like this. So it pushes up the button a little bit more. I hope you can see. And let's do border and bottom of one pixel. So um, solid primary color. And as you can see, the input still has some default browser styles, which we'll have to reset in a second. But as we are here, you can see the button is already working, which is awesome. But we could also make the button 100%. Let's have a look. Maybe we can do that. Maybe that'll be cool. Uh, let's go and score submit. And then the width will be set to 100%. Uh, I don't think that's working. Oh, I've misspelled submit, that's why. And the button is now 100%, uh, which is great. And now let's make a global styles for our input. We've got to be careful with this, how we do it. But let's go at the top where we reset our links. What I'm thinking of doing is... If, if it doesn't work, we can always modify, of course. So let's do input in here. And what I will do is I'll put input. Obviously, there are all sorts of types and inputs, and we're going to have to work on this uh, later on. But let's go with resetting some of the styles. So I would say let's start with border none. Obviously, as you can see, the border is now gone. Background image none. that resets it with some browsers, then background set to transparent. We can do the WebKit reset as well. So resets the, uh, the shadow. Then we can do the moss as well, prefix to do box shadow to none and of course box shadow none. I think box shadow might be available pretty much everywhere now I don't know if we need to do the prefixes but it's better to do that anyway then we can do a padding padding of 16 pixels and this is happening because uh, this is adding the 16 pixels to left and right and top and bottom and that's why so 100% plus the 16 pixels to the left and right, and that's why it's breaking the layout just like this. And to fix this, we'll have to do the box, box sizing, border box. And basically now the 16 is uh, taken inside, is considered with the size. Let's have a look how this works on desktop. As you can see, that doesn't look very good. So we're going to have to do a bit of work on that as well. Uh, we could do max width on this uh, here. So let's find it quickly. Um, we need new setter heading. And we could do max width 450 pixels or something like this. 60 pixels. Uh, and that kind of works with 
the designer have maybe a little bit more and the text needs to be the font weight needs to be changed as well i think let's change it to 500 pixels and let's change the font weight font weight to be 300 and let's have a look uh, that font weight did not work maybe you can change to it's 200 or better i don't know what i selected so we're gonna have to stick with this i think and maybe okay, maybe we'll need to put a little bit more of a line height in here of the heading line height three four rims i don't know okay this is looking a little bit better everything is center line everything is looking cool uh, when we scale down just like this it's working perfectly so now the next section that we need to do is the footer uh, hopefully the footer wouldn't take too long as well uh, it's fairly simple so uh, let's start with the footer in here the footer we're going to use the html5 element footer and instead of adding classes to this i'm going to create another div with the class of footer and you will see why in a second so let's say class footer this will make it just like this then the reason i'm doing this is because we have this section of the footer but then we have kind of another section below so what i'm going to do is have this section here and then i'm going to have another section in here called div with a class name of copyright just like this and now we can start populating uh, the containers with some data so first of all for the footer let's create uh, the container so we're gonna have a div with the class name of footer dash container this footer dash container will have a heading uh, of h3 and this heading will have a class name of footer dash container underscore underscore heading then let's add some of the headings so first one is how can we help just like this we need to add a ul which will be displayed from wordpress but let's mimic it as much as possible now so we can style it and we don't have to mess around with it later um, class footer body i would say for this one and inside here we're obviously going to have to create a few lists with a few links a href is equals like this and delivery okay so uh, let's copy this a few times just like our uh, old shift and down arrow one two three four five i think uh, the next one is returns then we have faq they're, they're just random dummy links to be honest contact us so let's change the next one will be my account the next one will be uh, find a store and the next one will be sitemap okay so let's go down and see what we get the headings are uh, looking good. I could definitely do with uh, some spacing uh, between every single element. I can definitely use some spacing between them, but uh, we can also, if you remember, we added uh, in styles.scss, we added this wrapper class. So if we go there, we're probably gonna, we can probably reuse this. So just underneath the wrapper, let's uh, find where the section is okay this section here and let's add two more classes and the first one is going to be the footer because i want to have the same equal space and also we're going to probably need one uh, later on called content area uh, which will be for our other pages so let's add it now content area and one thing that we didn't do is to change the padding on desktop so let's do a media query in here quickly 
include tablet portrait and all we have to do is set the padding to be the desktop padding that we set earlier and if we go back you will see that we have so much more padding now and in fact we probably uh, can do with less uh, padding in here now uh, that was the hero so let's remove this let's have a look oh yeah this is brilliant now we have padding everywhere it's looking so much clear it's like the original design uh, we have the padding here as well and we can focus on the footer let's go back to the footer so we're gonna have to shrink this down and have a look first of all let's create the other sections as well so we need to copy this container a few times four times i believe so one two three four uh let's do that So as you can see, this is looking fairly pretty, but uh, what I would suggest doing on mobile is probably hiding those sections and just making them so they are available to toggle. So if I go back to the browser and look for fed icons, we need Chevron down, get this. What we can do is open this open this in uh, Visual Studio Code, um, copy it and add the chevron in here just like this. It's a little bit ugly with SVG but let's go with it for now. We could do it if you have font awesome that would be easy I guess. As you can see we have this chevron uh, icon now which is brilliant and what I'm thinking is that we can hide these on mobile and only display them on desktop. So everything is set up in here. The last thing that we need to do of our HTML is to do the copyright section. But first of all, let's start this. Let's copy one of them comments and go in here and put footer. For the footer, we're gonna display it. Footer display as grid. Let's make sure that we set a gap of 20 pixels just between them everywhere then for desktop we can straight away include the media query tablet portrait and in here I'm gonna do grid and I can do repeat uh, four times one FR and this for desktop this should repeat them into columns uh, and we can check this out now if you like. Yep, everything is working into columns, which is brilliant. For the footer container, let's uh, do something like this. So we can have uh, and container and inside here, we're gonna be styling uh, some of the headings, the body and the icons. So this is the first time that we're gonna use Flexbox, but uh, let's go for it. And we can do and percent underscore underscore heading and we can display this one as flex and what I'm gonna do is just justify the content to be space between um, and this is because I want the arrow to be on the right side of the screen here and this will be kind of like this will act as a link when people tap on it this will appear and so on I'm obviously not gonna be doing it in this video tutorial because I've the recording is already over two and a half hours, which is insane. Uh, but it's just an example for you how to do it. Anyways, and then the next thing that we need to do is remove the body. So the body, we can set display to none. 
and we are le left with the actual links or headings which is brilliant but before we do this let's actually start the body so we can see how it looks like so list uh, let's remove the list style set to none sorry none then we need to uh, change um, we need to reset any of the margin to zero and padding to be zero as well just like this it's looking nice and then we need to make sure that all the links are displayed as block so they kind of like take the full width of the layout and they're easy to uh, click and then we just need to add some padding on them so they're easy to select as well just like this all right this is this is okay for desktop but for mobile obviously it might be a little bit too extreme let's go like eight okay this is a little bit nicer i think let's open it now in um, full screen and of course now these are on the right side and we don't want that we actually want them to be uh, on the left side so let's do that super quickly we're gonna have to add another media query inside the container here like run here so include tablet portrait and we can do we can do underscore underscore sorry we can do and sign underscore underscore heading and then we can just justify the content to the start save this and as you can see the they are now uh, aligned next to the text and they're not aligned perfectly so we could spend a little bit more time to align them a little bit we could align item center on this i guess so let's have a look align item center and as you can see they are aligned nicely with the buttons uh but that's good for mobile but we actually don't want them on desktop so we're gonna have to remove them as well so first of all let's remove this uh let's make sure that this is removed for mobile for desktop we now need to add them actually so we're gonna have to add the body in here as well and body and this will be block just like this save it and let's have a look so as you can see they're displayed on desktop but if we go down to mobile uh they are now gone the the icons the center aligned and everything is working perfectly well uh, obviously this will need to be triggered with javascript and so on we are not going to be having the time to do this uh, unfortunately because the tutorial is going for far too long the last thing i would like to do in here in those is to remove them icons and to do this because they are svg i can just simply go into uh, heading and i can just do svg i guess and just do display no hopefully this will work for us yep that's fine uh, go back to desktop they appear and we get the last thing that we need to do in here is to create the uh, footer first of all let's go to the feather icons again let's get Facebook let's get uh, Twitter let's get YouTube and so on and uh, this would do for now uh let's open twitter facebook yeah let's open those three they would do for the example and let's go back to index and at the bottom here where copyright is let's uh, finish this section super quickly what i will do for the copyright is i'm gonna create another div with the class name of uh, copyright underscore underscore social and these will be the social icons uh, and then we're gonna have to wrap those social icons in links and basically this is where we're gonna be adding the icons so first of all let's add something like YouTube I just don't like how big the SVGs are but I am zoomed in quite a lot as well so let's copy another one in here and this will be I don't know which one I copied I copied YouTube so let's have Facebook now 
Facebook and let's copy one more and add Twitter just like this and last but not least we need our copyright text here not inside this div but just outside it so we're gonna have to create another div with a class name of copyright body and then we're gonna have to add the copyright symbol which I have no idea how to do with um, the HTML elements I'll go in a second 2020 and got shock okay, simple like this copyright symbol HTML and it's just copy I could have guessed this let's add it in here save and all it's left to do is to style the icons in this section so let's do that super quickly let's extend them go back to styles and inside i'm going to create another section just below uh, the footer copy this and i'm going to call this copyright let's put the copyright margin let's give it a little bit of margin top so it's not so close together let's make sure that we align the text to the center and then for the social icons let's do social obviously there is a link inside so we can start the link instead and we can just do padding 10 pixels each everywhere and for the body and body we can simply do uh, margin top pixels and this and this should work for us but of course I think there's some underlines here that's why they are appearing like this and I don't know why the copyright is so close as well maybe I misspelled something um, I've obviously misspelled something so it's probably like this let's try that and of course for the body we can actually add uh, margin for the bottom as well uh, we can do margin uh, top to be 40 and bottom to be 40 and left and right to be zero or something like that so we have a little bit more space that concludes everything for this tutorial as you can see this moved a little bit when i changed the line height but overall everything is looking good the, when we add the items this will look nice as well in WordPress and everything else is looking quite nice and when I extend it as you can see uh, those media queries kick, very, kick on very late but you know how to change them by adding different media queries and so on so this concludes everything for this tutorial I hope you liked it don't forget to subscribe to my channel as always my name is Radhi and you're watching my channel Radhi the brand smash the like button comment below if you have any questions and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next video